I have a testimony. Occupation is this testimony with mom. Um, but um, the one who is giving the testimony. So, God is good. He is good all the time. That is his nature. And he is wonderful. Whether we like it or not, whether people try to uh, def or deny the fact that he is good. He will always be good, and we should be thankful. Even if you feel pray, uh, that you can't pray, if you feel that you have no strength to pray, just thank God for whatever you, you've reached and how you've managed to be there. Because it's not by our strength, but it's because of His grace. Remember, you, do not, you cannot um, pay enough to get the oxygen that you get. You cannot pay to breathe the way you breathe. It's by his favor and grace that we do. So I've been meaning to testify. I've been looking for a testimony for the whole of the week, but then I wasn't able to find one. And as I was at the verge of giving up, and I had already forgotten about the testimony. Today in the morning, we were with mom. I was with mom, uh, and then we boarded a matatu. So as we were seated, Rajili Sambaza in here. So that's where I was seated. And next to me, there was this young lady, a teenager, I presume. Uh, they, I, okay, Mkorino, yeah. Sorry to refer them to that, but those are where they are. But, so she was seated next to me. Her sibling was seated next, behind her. And then there was a small boy. I think they were also related. And then there's another girl. Uh, I think also a sibling or related, she was also seated in front. So now mom was seated next to me and then I was seated on the Sambaza. And then this lady, her, who had a, a girl, a child, she was around uh, 11 or maybe 10. But she, uh, if you look at her, she did not look well. She, you see these people, okay, we do not refer to them as disabled, but differently abled, right? So um, the mother, and the child, they entered the matatu, and then uh, she sat where the makam makanga usually sits, and then the child also sat next to her. So, the, okay, this is a religion of Mukorino, and then the lady who had this child, they, it's this uh, religion which wears white, and then they also have this white, uh, and then they just, okay, it's very long, and it's always white, or maybe a different kind of purple. I don't know if you understood what I don't know what they are called. Okay, what they refer to themselves as. So uh, the child sat there, and as the uh, as the matatu was moving, there was an odour, which was now pleasant, and everyone in the matatu could smell it. But then, what caught uh, my attention and also mom's attention is that we could uh, smell the bad door. But then this lady sitting next to me, she had the audacity to speak in her language. She turned and spoke to her sister or whoever she was, and they started laughing. And then the sister behind said something. I think she was trying to whisper, but then I can't get from Google. So she said, Sri, I quote, and I look at Sri And then it, it really hurt me because the way they were portraying it, it was as if it, this person had chosen to be like that. So they kept on, she kept on turning and turning. And then it irritated me, and then I said to myself, if this girl turns again to speak to, I'm going to tap her, and then I'm going to tell her this is not good. And then, guess what? She turned. But then what saved her from whatever I was going to say <laughs> is that when she turned, she came back with the phone, so I was like, Maybe the same one, they got a t-shirt, so let me just cool down. But I, it, if I could reverse time, I would have said something, because it was not right. And she even I mean, spoke to the girl in front there, who was sitting next to that woman and the child. And she, I mean, they were so inhumane to the point that she took a sweat out of the bag, and then she covered her nose, and then she was like, given this disgusting look, on her face. Mind you, we are all in that same material and we're also smelling the, the odor. <laughs> but we're not doing anything, we're just trying to 
<laughs> trying to endure AIDS because it's not like we're going to stay there forever. But then these people have they're going to charge. As a matter of fact, they're heading to charge. But then they still have the energy to like really treat this people with disgust. I actually that thing really hurt me and it hurt me so bad. Even when I was sitting I just felt very hard. Like I was telling myself, no, okay, what can I do? Because that she really deserved to be, okay, not embarrassed, but she really deserved to be rebuked for what she had done. Remember, when we come to this world, we did not choose to be born in the families that we were born. We did not choose to be this color. We did not choose to be light skin or dark skin. We did not, we did not choose to be black. We, if it was a choice, everyone would have chosen to be perfect. Like that, that color that is perfect, that color that Jesus had, which was which did not, was not known of, of which nation or native he came from, would have chosen that, would have chosen to be of perfect mind, would have chosen to be geniuses and to excel in school, would have chosen how to be pu uh, beautiful and maybe handsome and all that, would have been chosen to have this nice hair that white people have, the one that does not stress us or something. We would even have chosen the color of our eyes, even maybe the people would have chosen to have purple eyes, because it's unique and it's pretty. But then we did not choose to be the way we are. And the fact that we are different from others, the fact that this person is differently able and you have the normal, okay, actually you have the capacity of many uh, human beings. And this one is different. Not that they are, they are what is it called? Not that they are half made, but they are differently able. Just because you are, you're the way you are, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to project or mock this other person. Mind you, what if, okay, this is what I wanted to tell that lady, but since I didn't, I, I thought that I should share it with you, that you may know when you're going outside, you should not judge people for the way they are. What if tables turned and all of a sudden an accident happened and you lost your hand and you lost one of your leg? Wouldn't you be regarded as disabled, right? So what, what kind of, okay, what did you even give God to attain the perfection that you have, to attain all your organs at one point? You did not give anything that matched the capability of God to bring you the way you are. We're supposed to be thankful of how we were made, and we're not supposed to make others feel bad of how they were created. The, and one thing mom asked me to add to this was, if you had noted at first, they said uh, that uh, they were the okay. They came from the religion of Corinthians, and then this other lady also had her own religion. Once someone said that religion is God is not in religion. God Himself is not does not entertain religion because religion it's it's like rituals and procedures that you have to follow. Like you're not supposed to go against that kind of um, way. It's like the way the Pharisees used to live. They had to follow the law of Moses and not go beyond the law of Moses. In other words, they had a limited way of interacting with God. Now, religion is something like that, but then the difference between religion and uh, the way the Pharisees lived. Actually, the, the thing about religion is that God does not do any religion. He does in a relationship, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. So you cannot be in religion and expect to have God in it. And then when you read the book of John, it says that um, when you accept God, when you accept salvation, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, God dwells in you and you dwell in God. Meaning that you're supposed to uh, portray the traits of God. But then when you look at how this lady responded, she did not have the love of God. She did not have God in her. She was blinded by foolishness. Because if she had the love of God, she wouldn't have behaved the way she behaved. She wouldn't have turned and mocked and spoke something ill, and then they laughed. That was very inhumane, that was very hurtful. And then, when you actually look at the child, she is not aware of anything that is happening. She just kept on looking at, uh, at people. And, Have you ever seen the way a small child behaves? They do not know wrong and right. They just do whatever they do. That is how that girl looked, and she's of age, so you do not expect that from her. But that's how she is. So she kept looking, and then this, they were laughing loudly. They, were, they didn't even feel shame until mom looked at them, and then she was like, <laughs> and then that's when they stopped. They stopped doing whatever they were doing. 
and then we were waiting for the heart to turn and then say something. And the fact that I believe I am filled by the Holy Spirit, and also mom, the fact that we had the same motive of speaking of what was going on, and mind you, she also had planned that if she turned again and spoke something, she would also have attacked her. So imagine if you have attacked her at the same time. You see how the Holy Spirit works. You see how God works when He does with you. He makes you do what is right. But then, so now, this, they are saying that they are courageous, they are saying that they love God. They are going to church. But then, they do such things outside church. And then when they get to church, they are, oh my God. <laughs> Remember the Bible says, not everyone that calls me that God calls me God. So it's, I think that thing is really hard. My point is, what was I even bring it to? Okay, I was talking about the way the religion is. You see, when God does not dwell, it's just humanistic behavior. And not even just humanistic behavior. The fact that you think you have the knowledge to do whatever you want, because it's a free world, so you do whatever you want. Mind you, there's, a, there's someone who is waiting for that judgment today. You know, the one thing that I learned from whatever that incident is, I pray that the grace of God finds her and that she may know that whatever she did is not right. Whatever I learned from there is that all these people, the Mukorinos, the those ones who wear white, others, other religions, I mean other people who tend to say that they worship God, they're all regarded as Christians, right? They're not regarded as Muslims, they're not regarded as Buddhism or uh, is uh, Hinduism and all that, they're all put under the category of Christianity. And the fact that um, they're put under the category of Christianity, they tend to identify the name of Christianity. Christianity is not a religion, it's something that you, it's, a, it's like a contract you sign and you follow it to the latter. Like you do not backslide and then come back and say that you're a Christian. No, it does not work like that. Once you say that you're a Christian, you follow every order of Christianity. That is have a relationship with God, be filled with the Holy Spirit, moved by what God says and all of that. You do that accordingly to what God says. So now, if this if these people have already attained the name of Christianity and all that, that makes all Christians it's something that we learn in psychology whereby when someone picks a truth, a small truth of something, and then he makes that small part the whole of it. So taking this negative uh, activities done by people who claim to be Christians and then uh, smearing that dirt on the whole of Christianity, saying that Christians do not love the way the, the Bible says. So now you wonder, you are there, you're saying that you love God, and you know very well you love God, and you know very well that you portray the love that you have for God. But then someone else says, oh, you people claim to be Christians, but then you always judge us. And it's not even you, you yourself, you're a Christian, but this person is not a Christian. They just took that title because they thought that since they worship God, that is Christianity. I you see the way lack of knowledge is making people not see what Christianity is? And this is what even demeans others from becoming Christians. Because this religion, this religious behavior, this, not even religious behavior, this religion thing is making people um, be, making people think that this is Christianity. Christianity. But in real sense, it's not. So they focus more on the religion and leave out the, Christi the Christian part. And now they tend to say that, oh, if this is how Christianity is, of which it's not even Christianity, if this is how this thing was, I am not going to be a part of it. We cannot change how people think. Only God can change how we think. You know? That's so one thing that you should do. So if people continue saying that this is a religion, you, you know that you're a Christian. I know that I am a Christian. Why don't you take it upon your hands and start proclaiming the name of the Lord, saying that you're a Christian and that you love God. You love everyone, even those who are around you. Why don't you take it upon your hand and show the love of God to these people? Because I have interacted with some, uh, with, I don't want to say, okay, 
I've been interacting with people who I used to interact with before I was born again. And then I tell them about Christianity and then they ask me, are you going to judge me for my sins? And then I, for because I'm living a sinful life. And then I tell them, no, I cannot judge you because I'm also a sinner. Just the way you see me, just because you see me posting things of Christianity and know how I love God, doesn't mean that I'm perfect. So I usually tell them, I will not judge you for who you are, I will not judge you for the things you do, but you should know that there's only one person who is going to judge you. Like, what I felt from that is that people tend to think, people tend to shy away, to shy away from um, knowing God because they think that you're going to judge them. But I tell you today, if you decide that you will walk with God, if you think, if you feel that it's, it is hard for you to love um, people, for what they, uh, okay, to love people in their nature the way they are right now. You should ask God to give you that love. Ask Him to fill you with that love so that you can help spread the gospel to this person. Remember, you cannot share something with someone if you do not have the heart of sharing. You cannot love someone, okay, you cannot show kindness to someone if you do not love that person. That is how love is built. I, I, I hope you're trying to get what I'm saying. <laughs> You only show love to someone by the small good things that you do. Remember, God is good. And every time we're always praying and then we're asking God, Lord, let, let me be like you. Don't you think that being like God is by doing these small things that you think are so minor? But you, for, I'll use my example because I did not speak up at that time. But if I had spoken at that time, that is, that is love. That is how God is. God would have stood up for that person, for that mother, for that uh, child who was being mocked by this other person here. God would have stood there and said, do not do this. This is my child. The same God who created, I am the, okay, the, the same God who created this child is the same God who created you. Meaning that he can switch everything at a blink of an eye. And then this could be you. So that, why are you mocking this? Child like that, don't you know? Don't you know the God that you serve? Actually, that's where the fear of the Lord comes in. You should not fear God. Uh, you should not fear going to the presence of God, but you should fear doing some things. Meaning, if you see someone who is differently able, and then you find yourself wanting to mock that person, hey, you should think first. What? Can, okay, the God that I serve, if he saw me mocking this person. What if he just decided right now, out of nowhere, accidents do happen to you. What if something just fell from the sky and then it hit my brain and then I just become, my brain starts functioning slower, actually slower than the, the, that child. What would I even, what would I even say? What would you even say? That is where the fear of the Lord comes in. You should not mock people for how they have been uh, born. You should not judge them for the things that they're doing. You should just, be contented with whatever you have. Yes. And if she was a Christian, she was a true Christian of God, she would have prayed for that child. She would not have opened her mouth. If you remember the book of Proverbs says, the mouth of a wise person speaks in favor of him, but the, but the words of a fool consume him. So you should not be full. If you do not have anything good to say, just shut up. Nobody will. But nobody will. Has anyone ever judged someone for you? Keep it quiet whenever there's a congregation or a bit. No. So when then would you even speak out <coughs> to something that is now making sense to gain? Remember, mind you, when she mocked, okay, when she said whatever she said, because she said it in her own language, so I wasn't able to understand. Whatever she said to her sister, it made her sister laugh. Like she felt contented with the laugh of her sister. Like she felt good that she had made her sister laugh. Everyone likes to be funny. And whenever you make a good job and then people laugh, you feel good, right? Yes. So then she felt good, but she felt good in a wrong way. Because she felt good when her sister laughed about something that was so serious. So now when you focus on the on the mouths of people, on pleasing people, I tell you you'll die. You will never reach anyone because people are never satisfied. Like when you look at uh, how the um, Israelites, how God had brought a pillar of fire and a pillar of um, clouds to guide them, they were still not contented with whatever God gave them. They still ended up um, losing their way and turning into the golden calf, which had nothing, which gave them nothing. So if you focus 
first time I'll say that, oh, if I dare speak of God in front of these people, they will start demeaning me, they'll start speaking bad, bad about me. Whether you do, whether you speak of God or not speak of God, these people will still talk. That is how they were created. Some are not even people, some are just being whispered by the devil and then they, they also want to fit in, so they say anything to fit in. That is the world that we live in right now. So if you focus on them, you're always going to keep on running from east to west. To, it's like comedians, they're always just running from east to west and north, everywhere, trying to please people, but they never reach the satisfaction of people. So why don't you go with God? Some, Someone who has uh, given you a platform whereby you can do good, you can praise him, and he will exalt you, he'll bless you abundantly. At least, not, not even at least, here you're gaining something, you're gaining something good. But then when you look at uh, prison people, you do not get anything, you just keep on getting tired and even getting depressed. Because you are always looking at the negative comments that they put on you. That you always listen to whatever they, they say behind your back. But God does not do that. So why are you focused on pleasing them? Why don't you please God? Who is going to bless you? Who is going to exalt you? Who is going to make you? Who is going to make the earth tremble when you speak? Because he is going to speak through you. Yes. Are you getting it? Yes. So, we, ha we, have, we all have a mission. When you say that you're a born again Christian and that you think that you're not a minister, you lie to yourself. Anyone who has accepted Christ, God dwells in you. Because, as I have referred to the book of John, God dwells in you and if God dwells in you, what, what does it entail? It entails that you can walk and whatever you speak, if God is in you, whatever you speak is God, right? So meaning when you speak in front of people, you might not know what, what these people think, but one person, just one, in the midst of that place, what that one person is already caught by whatever you say, and they want, they're even willing to give their life, their life to Christ. I have witnessed this myself, even without speaking about God, just the way I live. When somebody tells me, oh, I, I fought in school, and then I'm like, are you even serious with your life? Don't you know who God is? Don't you know where the future will be in the next five years? Do you know? Uh, oh, this is an, okay. It's a testimony. I have a testimony. There's this friend of mine. So they were telling me that they got expelled. They got suspended from school because of fighting. And then I asked him, "Are you serious with your life? Do you know who God is in your life? Do you know what he told me? He told me, please help me know how to to be with God. Help me to have a relationship with God." That is how you minister to people. You do not have to stand before here and then preach so that you can minister to people. Just by the way you live your life, by the way you condemn sin. Remember, you're not supposed to condemn a person. You're supposed to condemn the sin in that person. So by, condem by you condemning sin, that person sees you as a child. Whether they will not show it or whether they show it, that person really sees you as strong because they want to how do you even get the guts as a teenager, as a young beautiful girl as you, as a young beautiful man as you? Why do you even get the guts to deny going to parties because you say that God does not like something of that sort? That is how you tap people. That is how you bring people to Christ. Uh, to Christ. It's not by, um, you don't have to wear a suit for people to recognize you as a child of God. You just have to live by the way God wants you to live. And that's how people will see the light of God in you. Remember, God is the light. He is the light. He is the light to the light. So if He is in you, he, if He is with you, people will see His abundant grace in you. And one thing I like to tell people to encourage them that whenever they see people backbiting them, let me tell you, you are very loved. If people talk about you, then know you have something great to do. One, yeah, because I'll use an example of how um, you dress. If you dress with modesty, if you cover your body wherever you walk, if you do not use makeup, and then people start saying, oh my god, that guy usually doesn't wear makeup, she doesn't wear the clothes that we wear, she's too old school, she, nah, they are very jealous, they're literally putting their imperfection on you, because they want to belong, so they use makeup, so they dress like half naked. 
so that people will recognize them. But you, ume chifunika, ume kosa kibaka marangi uso, but they still recognize you. Don't you see that that is uh, that is God's grace in you? Cause why are they why are they you know, noticing me? And I'm not even dressed like them. Just why? Like what did they even see in me? They saw your strength and they're trying to pull you down. Mind you, just because they spoke, you're not supposed to respond. That does not concern you. You just move forward. They'll just keep talking. Some will even change. Some will just keep on talking until they're old. That's when they realize why I should have listened to this guy. I should not have said anything bad about this. Remember, in Isaiah chapter 54, uh, verse says that the Lord will never shame you. He'll never humiliate you. But the devil will always. He will always, I tell you, he will always make sure that you fall under the category of humiliation. I have witnessed this personally and I have seen this happen to people who deny God's presence in their life. I have seen the way they live, I have seen the way the devil always embarrasses them, and then he still ends up, he still has the audacity to confront them, to come to him. And they still fall into that. Why? Because they think that this world, they value widely precious more than the value of God. And they tell you today, these things will end. It will end. Actually, if you focus more on God, you will come to realize God fills you with wisdom and knowledge. And you find to understand that these things are even nothing. They're just, they're just a waste of time. Because they will, mind you, I, I'm in the university, right? So I see people going to clubs, they, they go party, they just decide to skip class because they want to skip class. Akuna maria no more, and they are in school, but then they come to school, and then they decide to spend time with boys and forget about their classes. And then when the results come, this is grace of God. I refused to be a part of them, right? Do you know what God does? Sometimes, when we are nearing exams, someone texts you, you don't even know them. And then they're like, could you help me understand this? I did not understand this class. I chose to not be a part of them. And then, I don't know, I'm talking about the group, 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 the Because they believe, they know that you have not done whatever they've done. They know that you've always been in class. So they want you to help them to pass the exam. Don't you see that that's God's grace? Yes. He makes you, he, he makes them search for you. You do not go after them. Mm -mm. Remember, the um, spreading some, uh, God's gospel, it's something that you do free, right? Yeah. You do not force people. So if you see people who do not want to praise God, you just leave them by the grace of God and then you move on. You do not follow them to the latter way to your enemy. You do not do that. God gave us free will. And just as you have free will to, do, to worship God, let them also have free will to come to God or to just move by their way. You just pray for them. So now, if someone, eh, put your final exam, your year semester, your year Isha, I have not been attending class, I have little marks. Let me look for that one person I know she's always in class. Let me look for that one person I know he's always in class. And then they search, because it's not like I have my profile picture of my face so that you know me when you're searching into groups. No, I don't. So that, how did they find me? Like, it's just, I, it's just wonder, like, how do they even, how do they even know you exist? They, it's just God's grace. Like, when you focus on God, he will always exalt you. When you focus on preaching his word to anyone, anywhere, wherever you will be, if you just focus on doing that and excuse these other missiles or for whatever they come, if, even if they mean it, just, you don't even comment, you don't even react to it, you just look at them and you just do it. If you do that, I guarantee you, wonders should never end in your life. Like, you just, We'll just be giving you continuous testimonies. So, my point is, the fact that I failed, I had, okay, let me not say fail, because it is God's will that whatever happened, happened. I pray that it reaches her, that she may know whatever she did was not right. But the fact that that happened, I got a testimony today, 
I had been searching for testimony and it was not coming. But then I got the evidence last minute, so it came. So now, let me know, let me just focus on portraying what I had learned from that. And may you always stand by God. May you continue. Just that one word of God did this to my life. God has done this. God is like this. That one teaching, that is how you spread, you spread the gospel. There's no other way to start. There's no other way to explain how God's grace works. If you just allow him to speak in you. Because his word says that if he's in you, then you are also in him, meaning that it is automatically flow. I will testify that I did not plan to say whatever I have said about this. I had already arranged mine, but then God also had another plan. So I pray that you have been blessed by whatever the Lord has talked to you today. And may you not, may you stand for God. May you not care what other people think about you. Just see what God has told you to say. You just say it and you believe in him. And also, you know, so many minutes, the, same the book of Galatians says, lest you find your brother in a mistake, correct them with the utmost gentleness. Amen. And you also be careful lest you be tempted to commit sin. So just be gentle with the way you speak to people who are, who are doing wrong. Correct them with the utmost gentleness. Just in the way your teacher used to correct you in school. Pole pole. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Powder and give me a cock of much movie, glucose, and a week, and a couple of number. Caca, 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 So he kept that in his mind. So before that, na kumuka kinyelio. Na ina isajari lakini, unajua tu hali hili na kuwata. Uko kwa tieta. Kamba usi jari, kila tuta kwa saa. So after the surgery, akaruli nyumbani. Nika mpigia tena, kanda kunyambia. Mga mungajua mungu wala kwa nae. Anaika na mimi kweli mungu kwa na mimi. Yetu ndia mikuwa kinyambia. Na mimi mungu kwa na mimi. So I thank God for that. And I thank God because he was, he able, he was able to at least kurudi nyumbani sahi hako wako mayake. Aki nurse his wound, but anayelea vizuri. Tunayelea tuku mwopea pati mbubu zaidi. So, nashukuru mungu kwa maumbi yenu yote. Barikina. Barikina. 